Hello, wonderful people of the tube. Freddy Fufu here. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you here. So, um, this video is to show you how to set up uh, the settings in Sonobus for different scenarios. So, let's jump right into it. So, let me expand this here. This is my desktop and I'm gonna start with the simplest scenario which is we run Sunabus in standalone mode because we want to sing or play guitar or any other instrument that is coming in as an audio signal inside our audio interface. I myself am using an audio box Presonus 22 v VSL. It's, I think I bought that in 2011, so it's 10 years old audio interface from Presonus. It works fine. I capture the master out of uh, the record out output of a mixing console. I have a Soundcraft EFX8, <coughs> uh, to which all my mics are connected and. I can plug uh, uh, modelers or um, pedals or directly into the console. And I mix, I do a stereo master mix and I send that to my audio interface. So that's what I'm sending to Sonobus usually. I'm sending a stereo signal out of my... So I'm going to assume that you have a simple audio interface like that. <coughs> and that you're, you're going to want to uh, have... Um, you're not having a mixing console and uh, you want a vocal mic and uh, an instrument. Um, in that case, I would uh, send multi-channel. But if you have a mixing console and everything is mixed, stay on send stereo. And underneath, if you click on input mixer, you're going to see uh, your, your, your channels that you're sending out. So make sure that if you are play playing back some files, some music to your partner, that you click on this button here. Um, otherwise, they won't hear it. Uh, uh, <coughs> yes. So it's the same button here. Okay. So I just hit record to create a small file. Just that so that the transport section of Sonobus would appear. So I've got to play, go back to the beginning, loop, uh, additional file commands, uh, reveal file. It's going to show you where it is on your on your disk. Okay. And and you've got the level and file playback. So let's go back to the stereo where we have multi-channel. So here I would remove this and create two individual mono that I would call vocal and let's say guitar. And each channel uh, should be panned to the center if you want. You can pan a little bit each. You create a little distance between you and the guitar if you want but you can leave that in the middle and uh, <coughs> that's the monitoring level that you have and you have a global monitoring level here that should be at 0 dB if you only want to hear yourself you can click the solo button this here toggles the chat window I highly recommend you leave the chat window open and um, what else if uh, you uh, uh, click on effects here you've got noise gate a compressor and a parametric EQ and a, a input reverb send that you can send there's a global reverb effects and the just be beside the out level here that's the global reverb so by default it's not activated if you activate that you can send different channels of everybody to that main reverb and choose let's say only the vocals have reverb or something like that 
let's go back to those FX here. Compressor is really useful also. If you activate it, I recommend leaving the makeup gain at auto because otherwise you have to know what you're doing with these settings. You can back that up a little bit if you or put it higher up and the gain here will adjust because you're you're on auto mode. And also the noise gate <coughs> Uh, if you if you still hear a niss, you you raise the and but if you have to go more than than noon, you have a, a a really hot signal coming in and maybe you should back that down a little bit instead or trying to try to find a way to eliminate the um and the hisses in your signal chain. And if you click on Sonobus here. It's going to make the different option menu up here. So let's go. You should use an ASIO driver for uh, the least latency. Um, I'm using my Persona Socio Box driver. Uh, sample rate, I, I recommend using 48 kilohertz and making that the default on your Windows machine and everything to default to that. Uh, it eliminates a lot of headaches because when you have got those two sample rates competing and one of the software uh, defaults it back to 48, uh, it uh, sometimes resets the audio interface and creates lots of problems. So clicks and pops and sometimes the stuff crash. And <coughs> the audio buffer size, I use 128 and gives me 2.7 milliseconds latency, which is highly acceptable. Anything below six is really barely noticeable. Okay. Uh, so if your latency is, a, is above a t 10, 12, uh, maybe you should try other values. Uh, and if you go to the options menu, okay, the default send quality is it depends on in your internet connection. So if you have a, a really good I broadband internet connection that you can upload uh, at a, at uh, at more than a thousand uh, fifteen hundred kilobyte per second. You should set it up at PCM sixteen bit. Uh, otherwise, the good default is ninety six kilobytes per second. If you look at the window that I'm highlighting, it says that the default sync quality will be used when you first connect with someone. These values specified with the kilobyte per second per channel are opus compressed audio and use less network bandwidth at the expense of a little latency. It is not recommended to use less than 96 kilobyte per second per channel as that will increase latency more. The PCM 16-bit and above use uncompressed audio data and will use the most <coughs> network bandwidth, but will have the least latency and CPU load. If you are connecting, connecting with a known small group who all have good network service that can support them, using PCM 16-bit is recommended for the lowest latency. Otherwise, 96 kilobytes per second per channel is a good default. So, Tom, let's. Hey, Buzzy and Scott, try PCM 16-bit by default, and if you hear gargle, gargles and pops uh, or sudden drops, uh, go down to 96, and if it stay good, stay there. There's no reason to go below 96, really, unless you have really have a shitty connection. Maybe you should look to upgrade your connection <laughs> instead of changing the son of bus setting. Uh, and here, the default jitter buffer, I set it up at initial auto. And uh, there's a, this I leave, I haven't studied these settings. I leave that at that, at the, what the threshold is five seconds. I think that's the default, I think. The default user level, I leave it at zero dB. I click the use input effect limiter and the, uh, the slider snaps to click position and to automatically check for updates. Recording, uh, I, you put the path here at the top where you want to save your files. I have a Sonobus subfolder in, in my music uh, folder. 
uh, I save in WAV file in 24 bit. You have other format like FLAC or OGG. That's just my per personal preference. And I click all these options here except the metronome. So later on, you can remix each tracks individually and or create backing tracks to record over. It's really an amazing feature. So what's the one of the best feature of the Cinebus is that that record these four options that that are recorded at the same time. So you really don't need a DAW uh, unless you want to put a lot of use plugin before Sonobus. So the uh, only reason to not use a standalone is, is if you need plugin activated before uh, the, the audio signal hits Sonobus. We'll see that in another video. Um, so once uh, you've done uh, set setting all the then all the correct setting, you can save these the setup. Okay, and uh, I've got the default Sonobus setup saved. Then uh, that you can reopen later on. Load setup. Default Sonobus. Okay, and then click the connect option here's private groups public groups and then this is the field where you put your name it's called your display name and if you want to create a group you have to type it in a private group you have to type it in anyway but in the public group you can create a group or join any group that there are and you can use the recent column here to recall any previous group you joined. Um, so make sure that uh, you're in the proper group with the proper name and click connect. And here you go. I hope you learned something and that that video was useful to you. I wish you a really, really good day.